Hi everyone, understanding communication, development and development communication is the cost. Please make sure you hit the like button and at the same time subscribe because this is the means I'll be sending your assignments and also a link for your for your tests. So let's kick start uh, with a topic which is uh, understanding communication, development and development communication. What are we trying to achieve here? We're trying to give the three different concepts their own specific meaning so as to serve as a platform for us to drive this course. So we'll start with the first one which is communication. I want to believe most of us are familiar with the word communication. But however, there are different uh, disciplines in all of our courses of study. And majority of this discipline get to have their own definite definition of their own terminologies or have their own definite uh, definition for the word communication and what does communication mean to a photocopier the person who does photocopies or is, is into the business of doing photocopies for people he or she would define the word communication based on his own meaning which will be different from that of what a marketer will define is our own for a psychologist they perceive communication as a process by which an individual which is the communicator transmits stimuli usually in verbal symbols to modify the behavior of other individuals that is to who they are communicating with in order for them to do what modify their behavior while for a sociologist they would define communication as what as a mechanism through which human relations exist and develop or in a society so for psychologists now the definition of communication is different while it is also different for a sociologist if you ask someone in the medical line or a philosopher or even a communicator they are all going to give you a breakdown for you the different meaning of communication based on their own discipline without wasting much of our time the word communication is from the latin word communis which means common or shared understanding so communication is therefore a purposeful effort to establish commonness between a source and the receiver which is according to scrum in 1965 whatever is being shared could be associated with knowledge experience thoughts ideas suggestions opinions feelings comments etc we we'll actually need to now do what the fine communication here as a process of exchanging or sharing information ideas and feelings between the sender and the receiver through a channel so it involves not only spoken word when we're talking about the word communication it involves not only spoken words no but rather you get to have non-verbal symbols to as well it involves not only spoken or written words it also involves non-verbal means of communication by by way of gestures symbols signs and so on and so forth so however there are what is called elements of communication and what are the elements of communication that yeah, we can break it down into seven the first one is a stimulus the second is a source the fourth messages the fourth one is a medium a channel the fifth is a receiver the sixth one is a feedback and the last one is noise so we'll start with the first one which is a stimulus stimulus is actually something that happens in our brain that triggers communication we can see that that's something i just said can be in form of an idea in form of a message in our own head which has been triggered that allows us to communicate there are times when you just remember some things in your head you need to tell someone or there's a particular information you need to pass across to someone that thing is a stimulus that gets triggered for you to be able to do what's communicated to the to the receiver so the source you as a, the, the the person sending the message you can refer to yourself as what as a source while the message itself is the idea the medium or the channel as are, are the means of transmission while the receiver is the person receiving the message or the person that decodes the message you're sending the feedback is a, is some form of response you're giving back to the sender while the noise is uh noise can be referred to as something that distorts the communication flow that distracts the attention of the sender or even the receiver noise may occur in the form of transmission in the channel or the medium so the next one is a process of communication what is the process of communication communication is a process because it is dynamic it is recursive it is ongoing it is continuous and cyclical so there is no recognizable beginning and end neither uh, is there a rigid sequence of interaction but we may try to identify how the process of communication begins the process of communication uh, begins is what the first word stimulation so this is the point that the source sees the need there's always the need to communicate 
the source here sees the need to communicate. He receives a stimulus in his brain that triggers him to communicate to the receiver through a particular channel. So we can see the receiver, the sender here, or the persons that is, is our stimulus is being triggered as what? As the encoder or, or the sender. The next one, which is uh, encoding as, as the next step of the process of communication, which is the encoding or the encoder. The source processes here, yeah, the source processes the message it wants to communicate into a form that will be understandable to the receiver. This may be a feeling, opinion, experiment, etc. So the source is the one that is being affected by this stimulus, which is being triggered into a form of what communication. So we can see the one the person doing the encoding as the encoder or the sender. The next one is the transmission. What do we mean by transmission? Transmission simply means the medium or the channel being used to send the message across to the receiver through a chosen medium or a channel. So we have the reception. The reception uh, here simply means the receiver gets the message that is sent from the source. So we can see the reception here as what as the receiver. So the reception is the receiver that gets the message that has been sent from the source or the encoder. Well, the decoding here simply means the message is being processed. The act of decoding simply means the message is being processed and un understood and also interpreted by the receiver. So we can as well see what the reception as what as the receiver. Well, the last one is the response. The response can also be referred to as the word feedback. Is the reaction of the receiver to the message received in form of what in form of uh, a feedback which is necessary in every form of uh, communication next we go for the context of communication the context here means that uh, the context here means there are actually different levels at which communication occurs it can also be referred to as the kinds of communication that are available so we have five different types or kinds here the first one is the intrapersonal intrapersonal communication. Let me take that again. The first one is the intrapersonal communication. The second is the interpersonal communication. The third is the group communication. The fourth is a public communication. While the fifth is mass communication. For intrapersonal communication, it means the communication is within you. And the channel you're using to communicate here is the brain which helps in information processing and also in, in, uh, in decision making. And there is also a means of feedback because you talk to yourself, you discard certain ideas, ideas and replace them with others. So interpersonal communication takes place within an individual. While interpersonal communication, for interpersonal communication, it occurs between two people or more than two people who gets to send and receive messages uh, within each other and there is also an advantage of what of immediate feedback they do the, this process of communication verbally and non-verbally and the channel used mostly in their form of communication is sight and sound sight and sound simply means they can see each other and at the same time they can hear each other it also offers the greatest opportunity for feedback which is what immediate feedback the next one is a group communication. This form of communication occurs among a small number of people for the purpose of solving problems. Now we have what is known as, on our social media platforms today, we have what is known as WhatsApp group, the tel Telegram group, and even Telegram channels. So this group must be small enough so that each member has a chance to interact with all other members in that group. So the communication process in group communication is more complex than in interpersonal communication because in group uh, communication, group members are made up of several senders and even receivers. The moment you're, you're sending something on WhatsApp, you see it above the tagline, you see the, so, the, the sender's name already, you see so-and-so typing, let's say Karima typing, Taiwo typing, Mubarak typing, Noinda Mola typing. That tells you there's someone about to send a particular message and you all are at the advantage of receiving the same message at the same time. As a result of this, there are more chances for confusion. That is why so many uh, WhatsApp or tel Telegram groups have rules and regulations telling you irrelevant messages are not allowed. So messages are also more structured in small groups because the group is 
meeting for a specific purpose let's take for instance our telegram channel the purpose of meeting there or the purpose of, purpose of setting up that that channel is for academic purpose so the next one is uh, the public communication for public communication there is a sender who we refer to as the speaker who sends a message that is the speech he or she is rendering or the speech is relaying or the speech is reading to an audience let's take for instance politicians a political aspirant here is a sender who sends his political campaign messages or political manifestos in form of a speech to an audience who are the masses seeking out for their vote seeking out for their support or seeking for their for their opinion or seeking for their suggestions as regards what they, they want the government to do for them so the speaker usually delivers a highly structured message using some channels as an in interpersonal or small group communication so the channel here are more exaggerated than in interpersonal communication and for public communication the voice are actually is, is actually louder the voice is what is louder and the gestures are more expansive because the audience is what the audience is bigger i hope you're able to get it. so additional visual channels such as slides or the computer program powerpoints might be used to as well to further buttress the point of the speaker so the next one is mass communication we all know what the word the term mass communication means it means yeah, mass communication here means uh, the means of disseminating information or messages to a large anonymous and scattered heterogeneous masses of receivers which may be far removed from the message sources through the use of sophisticated equipment so it is a sending of message through a mass medium to a large number of people that are diverse dispersed and heterogeneous in nature using when we say sophisticated medium or sophisticated equipment we are referring to the likes of radio television newspaper the next concept to define here is the word development and what do we mean by development according to rogers it sees development as a widely participatory process of social change in a society intended to bring about social and material advancements including greater equality freedom and other valued qualities for the majority of the people through gaining control over their environment through what through gaining control over their environment we are familiar with the word developing countries and developed countries why do we say they are developed let's take for instance this time of uh, COVID-19 where we all are asked to stay indoors and the government promised to provide palliative measures to see that people do not go hungry what do we have for one community all they get is just what a bag of rice and four breads which we perceive as being disrespectful to the nigerian citizens well in canada or in developed countries they deliver this food to them for them to even eat for a week which is way too much for them to even uh, eat or even consume for that one week and comes another day comes another week where they are able to get another one again I hope we are able to get the difference between a developed country and a developing country so which one is developed that is development for you in a de uh, for, for, for for development roger sees it as what as a widely participatory process this widely participatory process is done by virtually everybody within the the, the, the community done by, by virtually everybody within such nation participatory process of what of social change in a society and why do they participate in it, they participate for them to be able to do what bring about social and material advancements about their own country which include greater equality freedom and other valued qualities such as health care free education water power supply etc for the majority of the people through gaining control over their own environment so really as further stress the endogenous dimension of development here by by looking at it from the perspective of the fact that people must participate by exploiting their own environment to improve their situation rather than expecting development to fall from heaven so this is expected of us too as nigerians we shouldn't expect the government alone to get this done we as citizens of the country should also look inward to look at what we can do to, to, to further develop our own society in a year to la i cited in shuala 2003 also gave example of the world development and to say development is change towards pattern of society that allows better realization of human values that allow a society 
greater control or gain greater control over its environment and over its political destiny and that enables its individuals to gain increased control over themselves. But what do we have in Nigeria as against the definition of what Inayatollah gave? It is the opposite. Where is the developmental change here? We don't have it. That further allows or better the realization of human values that, that increases uh, the number of healthcare, uh, the, the healthcare system we have in Nigeria and increases the free education we have and increases the water supply, the power supply to us all. One of the reasons why I'm having difficulty sending this video across to you guys is the issue of power supply. We don't have it. I actually need to get down to some place, charge them just because I need to make an lecture note or probably in, in lecture video or in lecture voice note to get across to you guys. So the development there is not what we have. So Toda and Smith also identify three objectives of development, which I want you to take key note of. The first one is to increase the availability and widen the distribution of basic life sustaining goods such as food, shelter, health, and protection. These four things mentioned here that are expected to be increased are actually the basic things people need in their country for, for, for them to be able to say, yes, our country is developed. The first one is food, the second is shelter, the third is health, and the last one is protection, which is security of lives and properties. They also look at it to say that development, another objective of development is to raise levels of living in addition to higher incomes. To raise the level of living in addition to higher incomes. The provision of more jobs, better education, and greater attention to cultural and human values, all of which will serve not only uh, will serve not only enhance material well-being, but also to generate greater individual and national self-esteem. So when we talk about raising the levels of living in addition to higher incomes, if federal government today, but if they are implementing the minimum wage to thirty thousand and the cleaner. Ordinary cleaner is getting 30,000 there. One, they've been able to increase is our income and also uh, increase their, their living condition. They've added value to their living condition. If they're able to provide more jobs for graduates immediately after they're done with school, it also adds to the national development. If they're able to give better and quality free education to the people, it also adds to what to the national development. So the cultural and human values too as well also needs to be upheld as one of the objectives of uh, development. And the last one is to expand the range of economic and social choices available to individuals and nations by freeing them from servitude and dependence. Not only in relation to other people and nations, states must also force ignorance and human misery out of their own confines. What do we mean by this? Majority of us rather go to travel abroad to settle down there rather than stay in Nigeria and wait for manna to fall from, fall from heaven. We all want to be in the developed countries where things happen for them, where the state government, their state government have already drawn, an, drawn out a plan, a blueprint on how the development of such country will grow. That way, it gives the people some form of self-esteem as regards to what we have in, 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 in the second point of our objectives of development. So the social choices available to individuals and nations actually comes from the fact that you, you they, they need the society of the day or the government of the day need to free them from servitude and dependence of the government rather they need to provide palliative measures or things they will need to cushion the effects of them depending on the government all the time so if there's a means by which the government can actually roll out jobs for the people people do not need the government to get things done even those who actually did uh, who are actually artisans, if there is light, if there is enough power for them to work, they would rather sit down with what they are doing and get their jobs done, which will also add to the to the national income or add to the national development one way or the other. And the last concept there, which is our development communication. We've talked about the word communication, and we've also highlighted the three different objectives of the word development. Now let us look at the word development communication by marrying both of them together. Quebra 1975 has cited in NATO and NATO 2010 defines development communication as the arts and science of human communication applied to the speedy transformation of a country and the masses, that is the people, 
from a state of poverty to a more dynamic state of economic growth which make possible greater social equality and the larger fulfillment of the human potentials. Now I want us to look at this uh, definition of uh, development communication as cited by NATO and NATO. Now NATO and NATO are able to look at the word development communication by looking at it as what as the art and science of human communication, which can be applied to the speedy transformation of a country and its people from a state of what of poverty to a more dynamic state of economic growth, which makes possible greater social equality and larger fulfillment of human potential. Here we need to look at all the necessary means of communication that can be deployed towards national development. And how do we get this done? It simply means by using all these means of communication to bring about speedy transformation of a community. Let us start with the community first. By bringing out its people from the state of abject poverty to a more dynamic state of self-reliance that will further promote economic growth and at the same time promote greater social equality and larger fulfillment of human potentials. So it simply, it simply involves the use of what? The social media. Every means of communication has to be deployed towards seeing the fact that people need to be removed from abject poverty. When we talk about abject poverty, it's not just about financial stability. It's not about financial stability alone, but rather education-wise, their healthcare system, power supply. How can we get people to self-reliance without actually needing to, to wait for the government to educate them? without actually waiting for the government to give them power supply, without waiting for the government to give them free education. How do we use this media to educate the masses? How do we use it to cushion uh, this poverty effect on them? That is what development communication is all about. It's about bringing all these means, all this uh, context of communication I mentioned earlier into play, from intrapersonal, interpersonal, to group communication, to public and even mass communication, and marrying it together with the word development, so as to bring what development to the society. So Moyemika also defines development communication as the application of the process of communication to the development process. I hope you are able to get it now. So this is uh, also in line with the definition of values. In 1988, we defined development communication or sees development communication as a social process aimed at producing a common understanding or a consensus among the participants in a development initiative. This is where we have actually need to stop for the day. So I, I want to believe we all understand what the term development communication means now. It's about deploying every means of communication. From radio to TV to newspaper to social media. Towards bringing advancements to the people. To the doorstep of the people. One could actually start with a small community. It could be a water project. As against what I said in your telegram uh, uh, class this morning. It could actually be a water project. Through photography, sometimes we could actually bring people together. If let's take for instance, we have a community suffering from good water. Most of these NGOs, what do they do? They send out letters, communicate to to uh, to multinational companies on the need for them to actually look inwards to to their immediate environment. So what's bringing in what bringing good water to the people? That way, the moment the people of that immediate community get everything they need. Not even everything. Get hold of water or get uh, or make use of the water being provided by this NGO or being provided by this uh, multinational company. They will be able to protect the interests of such company in their own environment. So as for the expression of development communication, it was apparently first used in the Philippines in 1917 by Professor Nora Quebra to designate the process of transmitting and communicating new knowledge related to rural environments. Which is why we we'll need also for our class to look inwards, look for a community where we can actually bring in our practical knowledge of the world development communication by deploying every means towards making sure that we, we cushion the effect of anything in a community that they found wanting, something they need. So we can actually make use of our own form of communication to make sure that, yes, with Summit University or because Summit University is within this environment, they are able to do this for so so and so community. So that will be all for this lecture. Thank you for your time. Please remember to subscribe and also like the page.
Until next time we meet, say bye bye for now.